From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Jack Van Impey presents. I'm sure that you will all agree that there is a concern about our young people today right here in the United States and around the world. We're going to be dealing with some of that on this program. In fact, my first headline, in God-fearing USA, where is the decency? Also, sins explosion globally and investigation of child porn site hit 77 nations. Wow. Oh, what a serious matter this is. I want to back up and say that Jack has said so very often that he started with Dr. Billy Graham when he was a teenager. And he's been able to respect this great man of God all of these many, man. many years. And uh, Dr. Laurie of the Harvest Church, one of the largest churches in the United States, was visiting Dr. Graham. And he asked him a very pointed question. He said, Billy, if you could start all over again, what would you do differently? And this was his response. I would preach more on the cross and the blood. There is where the power is. Amen. Oh, amen. Right, Jack. I know that you truly agree with Dr. Billy Graham, oh, don't you? Oh, there's power in the cross because we can be liberated from all of our sins. First Peter 2, 24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on a cross. Thank God for the cross. Oh yes, Jack, we need to keep the cross inside and outside the church, don't we? Because many ministers have failed to do that. They're not preaching on the cross. They're not preaching on the blood. America has declined spiritually. Take a look, the four R's. America is reveling in excesses, rollicking in pleasures, revolting in morals, and rotting in sin. And this is a good saying. They want a Savior who forgives their sins, but they don't want a risen Lord who tells them how to live. And you know, I, I believe that so very, very much. We need to have that kind of preaching in our churches, don't it's we? It's one of the signs of the last days. Jesus is coming. Listen to this, 2 Timothy 3, verses 1 to 5. This know also that in the last day perilous time shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power of the cross. From such, turn away. Leave them as fast as you can. Get out of their churches. They're not preaching the word. Well, you know, Jack, without the cross, we don't have a message, do we? The message of salvation and forgiveness of those things in our lives that we've done. Now, a misunderstood name that I've used on this program, some people say, whoa, what does that mean? Well, I'm going to ask Jack. It has to do with apostasy. It's in the Bible. What does apostasy mean, Jack? Apostasia in the Greek means a turning away from doctrine and the true faith. And Jesus could say, when I'm about to come, will I find faith on the earth? Luke 18, 8. Answer, no. Why? Because men of God are not preaching the word like they should. They're afraid to mention sin. They're afraid to mention heaven for those who are saved and the eternal hell for those who are lost. And so they've apostatized. Now listen to this. 
Here's where it's found, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3. Let no man deceive you, for that day Christ's coming to the earth shall not come except there come a falling away from the faith first, and then shall that wicked one, the Antichrist, be revealed. The hour has come. And boy, we've got false prophets galore pastoring our churches. You know, Jack, I was really surprised because in going over this program, uh, he gave me some names and titles that the Bible gives to those who are apostates. And I'm going to go back and forth with you here. Is that all right, yes, Jack? Yes. And you can give us the scripture backing up these names that God gives to the men who are apostates. First of all, grievous wolves. Acts 20, 29. Unbelievers. 2 Corinthians 6, 14. Enemies of the cross of Christ. Philippians 3, 18. Men of corrupt minds. 1 Corinthians 6, 5. Whoa, how about this one? Antichrist. That term is found four times in your Bible. 1 John 2, 18, 1 John 2, 22, 1 John 4, 3, and 2 John 1, 7. Antichrist not only means I'm against him, but it could mean a substitute for Christ. And when this Antichrist comes to power, along with the false prophet, the one world religion, Jesus is coming soon. You know, Jack, you've already sort of touched on this last question. What a very, very important question, especially if you're a minister of the gospel. What does God really want you to preach? Share in these last days. What does he want you to preach, Jack? Well, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel every creature, Mark 16, 15. And what is the gospel? 1 Corinthians 15, 1, Paul says, I declare unto you the gospel. And then he tells us what he means in verses 3 and 4, that Christ died, he was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And our God wants us to preach on sin 614 times. And we also have Joel Olstein. just had a big write-up here in our USA Today paper for the Sunday edition. And he said, people say, I don't talk enough about sin. Oh, but I do, he said. I say, all of sin and come short of the glory of God. Isn't that enough? No! <laughs> there are hundreds of sins mentioned. Coming short of the glory of God isn't enough. What does come short of the glory of God? What sins? And I challenge you, Joel, get up and preach. 1 Corinthians 5.11 and you'll empty your church and all you mega church guys. If any man that's called a brother be a fornicator, covetous, idolater, railer, drunkard, or extortioner, swindler, don't eat with him until he repents. Man, that'll either bring revival or it'll empty the churches. We need to preach what God's word has to say. Preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season, when they like it, when they don't like it. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but they'll heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They'll want their ears to be tickled. But thou, O man of God, flee these things. The one other thing, I heard you, Joel, Larry King alive, and he said, you believe Jesus is the only way? And I loved your answer. You said, yes. And they said, what about the Muslims? Oh, I don't know about that. I leave that to God. You just answered it. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Get back and take a stand like your dear old dad did, one of the greatest Pentecostal preachers in history. I love to hear him. Mm, well, the Bible is filled for all the ministers as to what they should be preaching in this day and age. Now, there's a lack of that in the pulpit. Let's see the results of the lack of Bible preaching. Bible preaching, God fearing USA, where is the decency? Jim Black states, much of today's rap music incites cop killers and death metal promotes violence, sexual and chemical abuse, Satanism, hedonism, and utter self-destruction. And Clark tosses out FCC rules to curb indecent speech. Oh, dear. And, you know, I really like what Charles Gibson had to say. Reap what you sow. I would tell you there are ethical imperatives in this life. Compassion, honesty, fairness, trustworthiness, respect for others. If those things are not the bedrocks of your life, you will suffer for their absence 
in time. How very, very true that statement is. He was addressing a college when he made that statement. You know, the Bible talks about decency. God talks about decency. Jack, can you give us some biblical language as far as what God says about de decency? Well, first of all, you can't be decent without an experience with the Lord Jesus Christ or the Holy Spirit. Galatians 6, verses 7 and 8. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he reap. Just what our brother said. He that sows to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sows to the Holy Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Now, how does one get to the place where he fulfills what the Holy Spirit tells him to do? Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lusts of your flesh. Galatians 5, 16. How? First of all, through Jesus. I had to laugh during the elections when one of the candidates was asked, uh, Are you a Christian? Oh, yes, but not a born-again one. Well, you're not saved if you're not born again. Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. John 3, 3. Except a man be born of water and the Holy Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So, verse 7 adds, you must, you must be born again. What does it mean? You come and say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I receive you into my heart. And once you do that and mean it, as many as received Jesus, to them gave God power to become sons and daughters. If you're a son and daughter, you had a birth. When you're a son and daughter of God, you have a second birth. How? Come into my heart, Jesus. We're going to have that prayer a little later for you. But let's go on a little further. When you're really born again, you don't run to the hell holes of the world. You don't run to the juke joints. You don't run to the beer gardens. You don't run to the nightclubs. You don't run to the casinos. You've been changed. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And when you do sin, you know it. A real Christian, when he does wrong, is so miserable he can't live with himself. This is how you know if you're saved. You had a fling with some woman, didn't bother you. You slept like a baby. You went and got drunk, didn't bother you. Ephesians 4 30, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed to the day of redemption. When one gets saved, he also gets the Holy Spirit. For if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of Christ, Romans 8 9. And that Holy Spirit comes to live in our bodies. It's his new temple. And 1 Corinthians 3.16 and 1 Corinthians 6.19 says that we are the temples of God, of the Holy Spirit. And when He is living within us and when you're really saved, He's there and you sin, you're so miserable, you can't stand it, you can't live with yourself. David saw a woman taking a bath, her name was Bathsheba, and he sinned. He wrote many psalms where he did nothing but cry for days. That's a great sign you really are the Lord's. And finally, he prayed, Oh, Lord, restore unto me, not my salvation, I've still got it. Restore unto me the joy, joy of my salvation. I'm sick of my sin, God. If you can go where you go, live like you live, run to the nightclubs and the bars and drink your booze and nothing bothers you and have that fling in a one-night stand and live together without a marriage license and it doesn't bother you, you need to get born again. Why? Because without holiness... No man shall see the Lord, Hebrews 12, 14. And now, friends, I just, too, the Bible does speak about so much, and it talks about the lowest actions that one could ever do. Take a look. Man is convicted of killing a girl, three. Horrorcore singer Richard Makrowski arrested over Nieberbrock slaying. And Cleaver, attack suspect, indicted on first-degree Murder charge. We're talking about murder out here. Alabama man says he threw four kids off the bridge. They were his own children. Oh, let's go on. We've got to figure out why younger and younger kids are committing crimes. Movies, videos, here, TV. Here we go. Newsweek murder in the eighth grade. Going on. Boy pleads guilty in killings. Nine-year-old avoids trial as adult in shooting. Nine years old. That young man killed his father and another gentleman. I want to ask Jack, why does somebody commit murder? 
Is it hate that causes them to do it, Jack? Whosoever hates his brother is a murderer, and no murderer has eternal life abiding in him, 1 John 3, 15. Hatred is what causes murder. But wait a minute. There is a satanic power. We say, oh, temporary insanity. Bunk! It's a satanic spirit controlling individuals that makes them murder and commit all these heinous crimes. You are of your father the devil, Jesus said, and the lusts of your father you will do. He, Satan, was a murderer from the beginning. Whoa, he murdered. He infiltrated the mind of Cain who slew his brother Abel. It's wicked. It's wicked spirits. All right, two more questions really, really quickly here. How about punishment? Should there be punishment for that kind of a sin, murder, and can we be forgiven? I believe in capital punishment because the Bible says in Exodus chapter 20, Verse 13, thou shalt not kill. Oh, we can't have capital punishment then. We're not allowed to kill. Wait a minute. It's a misinterpretation of the Hebrew. The Hebrew word is murder. Turn the page. He that smites a man shall be put to death because he murdered. Leviticus 24, 17, he that kills any man shall be put to death. Capital punishment. You can't get around it. Jesus had it right in Matthew 19, 18, when he says, Thou shalt not murder, and all murders will end up in an eternal hell. Revelation 21, 8 and Revelation 22, 15. All right, going on then. Can we be forgiven of murder? I got a letter from a guy in death row. He said, I accepted the Lord after watching your program, and now I'm ready to die. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth from all sin. When all ten sins are mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 6, verses 9 and 10, verse 11 says, And such were some of you, all of these sins, but you're washed. Praise God for the cross, Billy Graham, and the precious blood. Keep preaching it. Yeah, the apostle Paul was a murderer, Jack, yeah, yeah. and he was the greatest apostle yeah. ever. All right, adult entertainment. It is a $13 billion growing industry in the United States alone. Take a look. And here you see it, porn, business of pleasure. All this next one, child prostitution is America's dirty little secret. And Super Bowl draws child sex rings. Oh, my word. Austria says bust of a global child porn ring involves 2,360 plus suspects worldwide. And woman accused of offering daughter seven for sex. God forgive her. And Marriott says no to adult movies in new hotels. Good for the Marriott. Of course, they are one of the largest leading hotels in the world, and we thank the Lord so much for that stand. You know, Jack, the Bible has a lot to say about pornography. It really does. They have eyes full of adultery and cannot cease from sin, 2 Peter 2.14. Jesus said in Matthew 5.28, if you look on a woman and lust after her, saying, oh boy, I wish you have committed adultery with her already in your heart. Adultery? Adultery! in your heart because of desire. 1 John 2, 15 to 17, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of God is not, is not, is not in him. For all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world, and the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that does the will of God abides forever. Clean up your mess. Because you name the name of Jesus, you ought to be different or you're going to miss heaven. I'll tell you, America is loaded with sin and our preachers are silent. Come on, you men start preaching on sin and naming the sins. And you may lose some of your members, but you'll populate heaven because that's where the redeemed go. Thank you. All right, I just wish that we had more time to explain some of these things. But marriage, let's get to marriage. Is it really necessary in a love relationship? If you're a couple's embrace marriage, I'm going to go really fast here. Marriage, no longer necessary. Also, living together, no big deal. And then more young couples are having babies than deciding to wed. Out of wed like births, on the rise worldwide. And no wedding, no womb. Now this is in New York City, an area they're saying they're trying to do something about wedlock. Verse, they need to have more marriages, the sin of cohabitation. 
And then one in 14 girls in U.S. has an STD study shows. One million chlamydia patients going on. U.S. has underestimated HIV infections. And let's take a look at this one. Let's talk about teen sex. 63% of high school seniors have had intercourse. What a price to pay. What a price to pay, and Jack. And God's going to hold you preachers responsible because you don't have enough backbone to speak up. You can't even take a chiropractic adjustment, you jellyfish. Tell him what God's word has to say. It is good for a man not to touch a woman sexually to avoid fornication. That's between the unmarried. Let every man have his own wife. Let every woman have her own husband. Why? Because only in marriage is sex right. What you say? Only in marriage is sex right. Hebrews 13, 4, marriage is honorable all and the bed undefiled in marriage. But outside of marriage, whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Now I'm talking to all you people who say you believe this book. If you're living together without a marriage license or you're having one night stands and you're having free sex and you think you're getting away with it, you are going to miss the kingdom of God forever and forever. And you'd better get right with God today as we pray in a few minutes from now because 1 Corinthians 6, 9 and 10 says, The unrighteous shall not, shall not, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Who are they? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. You're outside of the kingdom. I'm going to pray in a minute. I'm going to ask you to get right with God, and I'm going to ask you preachers to get revived and start preaching all of the Bible, lest some of your members are eternally separated from God because you didn't have the gumption to preach, thus saith the Lord. Oh, Jack, my heart has been so moved. You know, those verses cover a lot, but how good it is to know that the Lord will forgive anything, everything, gone completely. Will you open your heart to him and allow him to be your savior? Jack, the invitation, please. Acts 2.38, repent, change your mind, pray it. Father, I turn from my sin, I repent. I'm asking you to save me. If you're backslidden, I'm asking you, Lord, to take me back. I've wandered far into sin, God, forgive me. Lord Jesus, today I trust in your shed blood to wash away every taint and stain of sin. Come into my heart, precious Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, I trust you prayed that prayer. If you did, there's my address. Please let me know. First steps in a new direction, new direction will be in the mail. So let me know you prayed the prayer for your Savior to come in. Well, you know, we have a wonderful offer for you. Bob, would you please tell them how they can receive it? To order your copy of the book, God's Good Plan, with the bonus DVD, Terrorism Accelerating, But Peace Coming, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impey Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impey Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, N9A6Y1. Thank you so much, Bob. Please order God's Good Plan because... We are also going to be enclosing in an extended DVD that you will want because we are giving more information. And now, friends, I want to leave you with a wonderful thought. A godly example is worth more than a thousand words. How true. Look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much.